Hey, what is happening everyone? Welcome back to another video and today we're checking out the 8-bit do M30 Sega Genesis 6 button controller. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So this one comes in two different variants. The Bluetooth variant, which is what we have here, and the 2.4G model, which comes with a little dongle that you can plug in and it will magically sync up to your PC, Mac, or your Raspberry Pi. Now I have tested it with my computer and we'll take a look at it in just a bit, but I have also used it on my Nintendo Switch. And of course, if you really want, you can plug it into your phone or Android device such as your Android TV box. The manual that it comes with is pretty straightforward. It tells you everything that you need and nothing else that you're probably not going to look at. But of course, all the important information is also condensed right on the back over here with the sticker, which tells you how to switch between the four different modes using the built-in shortcuts. We got one for the Switch, D input, X input, and Mac OS, which is really, really handy. For example, for the Switch, we can hold down the start button and hit up Y, and you'll see on the bottom that the LED will flash, showing you that it has connected to the right mode. But before we actually go ahead and do some gameplay, let's talk about how it feels in the hand and what the build quality is like. Well, for the price, you're getting something that is actually pretty nice. It's really solidly built, it feels great, the buttons on the back feel nice, the D-pad works fine, and all the materials are very faithful to the feeling of the original Sega Genesis 6 button controller. And yes, if you are wondering, they do actually sell a phone clip that is specifically made for this one that will attach to these grooves on top and on the bottom. Now when putting it head-to-head -head with an original Sega Genesis 6 button controller, there's a whole lot of differences. So let's start with the looks. Overall, I think both of them look pretty okay, but I do prefer the M30 a whole lot more because of how clean it looks. But of course, other people like the classic look of the original controller. Now when it comes to comfort, the original controller isn't all that bad. It's got some curved edges. It kind of feels too narrow and kind of too old, but the M30 on the other hand has a much better grip and it just feels a whole lot more ergonomic. Now when comparing the D-pads, there's actually a big difference. The original one is much easier to navigate and it just, you know, just kind of rolls with your thumb and there's really no force required. Maybe this control is just old and it's broken in, but you can see how easy it is to navigate around the buttons. So if you are playing a fighting game, then this actually might be a better controller. Now the M30 D-pad here feels more tactile. It does require a bit more force and you can see here, it's uh it's not as easy to click and rotate as the original controller here. So in terms of D-pads, of course, it will come down to preference, but I prefer the original controller just because it's easier and feels way more fluid. Moving on to the start buttons. The start button is way more tactile than the original one. And the original one only had a mode switch on the back for a trigger, while the M30 has two membrane buttons here. Now when it comes to the face buttons, there's a big difference. The original one feels way more tactile and the buttons have more distance when you press them. Not only that, but the buttons here are also kind of wiggly. But to be honest, that doesn't take any away from experience because these buttons just feel really, really nice. They're just very well defined. Now the M30 buttons on the other hand, they kind of feel a bit more mushy compared to the original controller. And that's just how they are. I mean, especially these top buttons, they feel, um, they don't feel as crisp when pressing them as the original controller. And um, here, take a listen. So hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of what the M30 is like compared to the original controller. To be honest, if you've never used one of these things, then you're probably not going to have an issue with it. And really, they have done a pretty good job trying to stay as faithful as possible to the original controller, and I applaud them for that. Mainly because it's just really convenient. So anyways, let's play some games. Now as you can see, everything is working just fine here, and everything feels really nice to play on. And I actually prefer to play like this instead of actually using the actual controllers on the Switch itself. Alright, so since I'm so terrible at this game, I'm just going to show you what the mapping is like and what kind of response time you can expect from this controller. So, let's take a look.
So you'll notice here that I cannot turn. I just simply cannot. And unless I go ahead and change the controls, which uh, doesn't seem like I can, it's pretty much impossible because this game requires an analog stick and that's how it was mapped originally for the specific port. So Doom 2 is out of the question. And I did try Blaze Blue here, the demo, and the mapping here was also very wonky. So not every Switch game will be properly mapped. As you can see, Asphalt here doesn't work, even though it should. So that's kind of unfortunate that you cannot really remap any of the controllers. It doesn't even detect the controller, just like with Rocket League, it does not even acknowledge it exists. On the other hand, Doom does detect it after a couple tries, but it still doesn't work properly. Alright, so here we are using the built-in Windows test screen, and we can see what it looks like when you have it connected. As you can see, it says Bluetooth X input compatible input device. And when you open up the test, we can see that everything here works perfectly fine, as expected. And as you can see, the Z-axis is configured to be like so. Now here's one cool thing that I didn't know about it until now, and that was the fact that you can actually go ahead and plug it in using a micro USB cable to your computer, and what do you know? It shows up as a regular Xbox 360 controller and things just work, which is really cool. Now one thing that this controller will be really nice to play with is a whole lot of fighting games because of course you need all those buttons and this controller has most of them right on the front for a 6 button game and if you really want you can map the shoulder buttons to do the same thing. And with all that being said, that is actually pretty much it for this video. It's a pretty nice impressive controller, it is pretty comfortable, and it feels really nice to play with. But of course, before you buy this controller, make sure you have an idea of what games you want to play on it, because not all games are going to work fine, especially on the Switch, because you cannot remap any of the buttons. But for retro gaming, this thing will be pretty fantastic. And with this Bluetooth one, you can get a clip for your phone and turn your phone into a small retro gaming device. So uh, do I recommend it? I would say yeah, absolutely. Check it out. I'll leave links for it in the description below. And as always, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.